I've called Perplexity the Swiss army knife of AI because it brings together all of the best tools in one place. Today I want to show you five ways to tap into its new features. We're going to start simple and level up from there. You know it's great for research, but it's becoming the ultimate AI hub. With Perplexity, you can switch between models easier than anywhere else, maximizing AI's potential. Experimenting with different models is key to staying ahead, and finding different ways to mix and match them is a major theme of this channel. Mastering this approach isn't just about productivity but it's about trying to future-proof your career. That's a transition I'm working through and I'm trying to help as many people as I can work through it as well. Perplexity may just be the most important tool to stay up to date with, so let's start with the iPhone app. This app is awesome as it lets you snap photos and use voice commands in real time. So whether you're dealing with a broken appliance at home or some complex work issue, this is a game changer. I recently used it to help me fix a leak under my sink. I just uploaded this video. I clicked this little microphone button here in the bottom corner and I said, hey, my sink is leaking. Can you help me pinpoint the possible causes here? And look at this. I pulled it up on the desktop app. There's my little photo there. Here's all the different possible reasons the sink is leaking and step-by-steps for diagnostics. It's super helpful to have that right on your phone, but it's not just for home repair. Think about it. If you're at work and you've got a whiteboard full of notes, you can just take a photo of that and ask Perplexity to turn it into text and save that in your Notion or wherever you save notes like that. There are a ton of ways to use this. I'm hopping into the cheat sheet here. I create one of these for every single video that I make, and this is packed with a bunch of different ways you can use this iPhone photo functionality. In addition to the ones we went over, you can use it for on-the-go product comparisons. If you're shopping, we're going to come back to shopping uh, here in a minute, but also travel and, and navigation. So if you're somewhere and you're wondering what a certain landmark is, or maybe you're lost, or you want some information about where you are, snapping photos and asking questions can be a really cool way to figure out you know more about where you are there's a ton more in the cheat sheet related to this but in short no more endless Google searches. You can get targeted advice instantly and save a ton of time. When AI first came out and I realized I needed to pivot my business, I needed to learn so many new things. I really wish I had this Perplexity app back then. It would have helped me learn all this camera, lighting, and sound stuff so much faster. Now that you've seen how the iPhone can streamline your everyday task, let's move to something a little more creative, image generation. Perplexity isn't just for text. It brings together some of the cutting edge image generation tools out there, including Dolly and Flux. It's super cool to combine this with different large language models and use these powerful large language models to help you decide on the right image prompt that you then feed into these image generation tools. But there are a couple little hacks that you need to know about this for it to work right. So right now I'm using the desktop app that I downloaded from the App Store. If you click this little gear button down here, it brings you into your settings and this is the best place to pick your uh, AI model. You can see you have access to GPT-4, GPT-4.5, this leading model, Claude 3.7 Sonnet. You've got Gemini, you've got Grok 2. I know that Grok 3 Three is coming in here pretty soon. And if you have the pro version, there's even more you can find right in here. You've got access to the Pro model, which is their Sonar proprietary model. Deep Research, which we'll get into here in a second. Reasoning with R1, that is the Deep Seek model from uh, China. And then this O3 Mini, which is a super powerful reasoning tool. This is the one I like to use to come up with the prompts for the images that I generate. Using that O3 Mini, I just put in this prompt that says, please create a flat illustration I can use as the header image for my email newsletter about weightlifting. And it went out, it didn't create the image, but it did a bunch of research and found the type of thing that I was looking to create. Then it listed all the different aspects of those types of images. I followed it up with, hey, these are great, and using these as inspiration helped me develop a precise prompt. I gave it a little bit more details about what that prompt was for, and it pulled together a really cool prompt that we're going to use now to create some images. So I'm just copying and pasting this right here into the web version, and it's going to tell you I can't generate images. This is a little bug that I'm sure they'll work out soon. But but what you need to do is go to this image generation right here, this tab, click this plus button, and the key is to click this little wrench. This wrench will give you complete control over the prompt and get you away from some of the goofy uh, styles that they are sort of funneling you towards. You're a little bit limited in how much you can put into this prompt, so you gotta shorten that a little bit and submit. And there you have it. That looks exactly like what we need. Pretty awesome. Check out how closely that matched some of the reference images in in our research. And if you want to select a different image generation model, you've got to go into the web version, 
click here on the settings right here in your profile and it's right here image generation model i've been having the best luck here with dolly 3 but I know that once they get the new flux in here, that's probably gonna be even better. But the cheat sheet has a bunch of different ways you can use this for our little content, social media updates, to revamping your personal branding, looking for personalized gifts and art, uh, other ideas for home renovation. There's a ton in here. One of my favorite thinkers is Naval Ravikant, and he talks a lot about how judgment is more important than hard work. And I think now in this age of AI, this is more important than ever. In that way, success in this new world of AI depends more on taste, discernment, and really knowing what to ask for. And speaking of knowing what to ask for, let's take a look at how perplexity can help us with online shopping. If you ever spot an item that you love, but you have no idea where to buy it, you can just snap a photo, upload that into perplexity and have it do the search for you. I've got this little Buddha statue on my desktop and I wanna buy one of these for somebody. This was a gift to me, I have no idea where it came from. I just took a photo of it, popped it into perplexity and said, hey, I'm looking to buy something like this, can you help me find and purchase that item? It went out and did a bunch of searches and it returned this table comparing all these different products that it found, along with some links of where we can buy these. Not only that, it's got this link now here where you can buy it directly in perplexity. Just clicking that button, Buy with Pro, I have it set up with my uh, account information in there. It has my address and it delivers it directly to my door. This is super helpful for gifts, but it can also be really helpful when it comes to any sort of gear that you're buying. If you wanna compare and contrast things, you know Amazon is so filled with sponsored links that it's hard to tell if any of that is accurate. In the cheat sheet, I have a bunch of prompts that can really put this on steroids by giving you some unique parameters for your shopping searches, making sure that you're being clear on the budget range, uh, features, etc. But now I've got to figure out a way to pay for all this stuff. So let's do some financial forecasting. This is really where the rubber meets the road when it comes to perplexity because you can combine these awesome different AI models along with the focus features that it has for some really cool results. You can click right here to select the focus feature. And what I love is this math focus feature. There's a lot of cool focus features, but this math one in particular is awesome because this is where a lot of the other large language models fail. So I'm gonna click that, and then I'm gonna use this reasoning with O3 Mini, which is a really powerful reasoning model by OpenAI. And the power of combining these two is really something special. So with those two selected, I'm just gonna drop this prompt in here that has a little dummy data about sales, but it just says, I'm trying to forecast my future sales. I have 100 customers now. I had 25 a year ago and about 53 months ago. So this is an exponential growth curve, which are really hard to calculate on Excel, et cetera. So I'm just asking, hey, can you please help me forecast what my customer count might be in six months? Let's run this. It's really cool to watch this O3 mini reasoning model connect with that math focus feature here. So it says in about six months, you should have about 200 customers. You can see it's capable of some really complex math here. And I have not had any problems with this recently. In the past, math was something that these AI models really struggled with. In the cheat sheet, I have a lot of different ways to use this, different ways of mixing and matching certain AI models that are good at certain things with different focus features to get the most out of this particular functionality. It's great for financial planning, decision making, project profitability, and more. One of my favorite thinkers is Tim Ferriss, and he's always talking about focusing your optimization efforts in the places that matter the most. And I really feel like understanding which model excels at which different task is one of those major leverage points. I've got notes all about that in the cheat sheet if you're interested. But perhaps an even bigger point of leverage is the ability to automate processes directly in perplexity. Let me show you how this works. Inside of the perplexity spaces feature right here, you can build out prompt sequences that can automate repetitive tasks. If you're familiar with custom GPTs or Claude projects, perplexity spaces is very very similar. But unlike those, inside of Perplexity, you have access to all these different AI models. Here are some instructions for creating a complete PPC campaign all right inside of Perplexity. These are the instructions that uh, the large language model will take to walk you through this eight-step process from coming up with different ideas 
copy, uh, targeted keywords, and a ton more. So I'm just gonna copy and paste all of this right into this new perplexity space in this AI prompt section, which is also known as the instructions. And for this one, I'm gonna select GPT-40. I've got lighting on the mind, so we're gonna create a PPC campaign all about cinematic lighting equipment. So I'm just gonna grab this copy from this website here. I'm not affiliated with this website, just grabbed it at random. I'm gonna select all, copy, and I'm gonna paste that into our PPC campaign builder we're gonna let it rip so cool to see this going out and doing these searches you can't do that really inside of the custom GPTs or the Claude projects just telling it to please proceed with the next step in its instructions after it's pulled all that information in and now it's generated five PPC campaign ideas super fast these all look pretty good I'm just gonna say number two looks good now it's creating the sub copy for this and I've got a whole nother video all about exactly how to get the most out of automating any process when it comes to perplexity. I'm going to link to that now. You can think about this not only for PPC campaigns, but any sort of content, any sort of, you know, weekly reports. You can automate those. Really anything that you're doing that really requires text in and text out that you're doing on a weekly basis, you can think about creating a process for that. And if you wanted to put this on steroids, you can start to think about implementing a piece of software called make.com. Here's an automation I built that goes through and pulls in the weather, pulls in some news about my favorite sports, favorite AI news, and dumps all of that into different Notion uh, pages that I can just look at first thing in the morning. I've got a bunch of videos on how to do these automations. I'm going to link to all of those in the description if you want to get into some of this advanced stuff. Letting go of my 15-person agency was scary, but it gave me some space to think. Now, as I'm rebuilding, I can be very intentional about how I use tools like this to automate some of the mundane stuff that really used to get me down in a day-to-day -day basis. I've got one more surprise element. As I was working on all this, I came up with a business idea that I want to share with you. You can take this and run with it. One of the coolest things about perplexity is that you can quickly build out knowledge bases. So any piece of research that you're creating, you can easily turn that into a PDF or download that into something that can actually be used as a knowledge base for a large language model or an AI uh, system. So the business idea I came up with is building these knowledge bases at scale. So not just one, but building a bunch of them, maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of them. So think about Airbnb uh, locations. So everybody that owns an Airbnb has a little bit of a binder that says, you know, here's the hot restaurants, here's the things to do around town. Wouldn't it be cool if that was a chat bot? The way you can do that at scale is to just run these different perplexity searches around these different locations, looking for all that different information, restaurants, things to do, and so forth, and then pull that documentation into a knowledge base that a chat bot can access. So I hope this makes sense because I'm just now starting to think about it, but I think there are a ton of use cases for this. You could start up a whole business creating these little mini chat bots for every single Airbnb um, owner in the world. Not only that, but it can work really well in the real estate space, in the franchise space, any place that has a bunch of different locations. You can now create these knowledge bases that are the fuel for these chat bots at scale using perplexity. So take that and run with it. There's a lot you can do with that idea, but I want to congratulate you on sticking with it, on learning some new AI skills on putting in the work that it takes to transition into this new AI world. Like I mentioned, I have a cheat sheet available for this video that is over 20 pages long, and it goes through way more than we are able to cover today, including all of those PPC instructions and ways to think about those more advanced automations, as well as a ton of other prompts for the other use cases. So there's a link to that in the description. Check that out. Support this channel by joining my Patreon. You get access Access to that and over a hundred and twenty other cheat sheets just like it there's also some coaching options in there as well but I think the next step for you in your AI mastery is learning how to automate any process with perplexity so learning how to build those instructions like I showed you in that PPC creator I've got a video all about that right here I will see you over there Come here, go, please.